Okay, got a little bit more gray to do here. I'm going to extend the, what I call the damage halo of gray. Just spraying, there we go. Around this scratch coming out of there. And that scratch coming to there. A little bit around the edge. And I got two scratches coming in here. I'm going to show you why I did that, that little halo, because we're going to come in using a little mixture, and what this is, it's a combination of, I used uh, 4101 fine aluminum silver, and then about maybe, no, 10, 20% of the quicksilver, and then 10, 20% of the UVLS to get a nice little binder. No reducer whatsoever, gave it a nice little stir, and what we'll have here is a pretty decent silver for the little highlights, little scratches, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Actually, I'm going to get a smaller brush for this. It's over here. And we'll come in. Just do a little metallic scratch right there. Now, you'll have to come in and probably go over this a few times for coverage. What we'll also be using this for is little areas of damage, like up here, like where the paint is, and this is where I'll be dabbing it at. The paint's damaged blue, through the blue down to the metal. And this will have a little bit of a metal contrast to it. You don't want to use white or black or gray in this because then it'll, it'll kind of, it won't look like, like it's metallic. You, want, you need a metallic in there. Now, Quicksilver itself sprays great through an airbrush, but it doesn't brush it, it's very, very thin, so it's difficult to brush. That's why I kind of bolstered it with some fine metallic. Over a large area, the fine metallic will look very sparkly, but in something small like this, it'll actually look really a lot, it looked very much like battle damage. And I will also come in with another brush and brush some dark around these scratches to show like some burn marks. Or I might come in with the micron and do that. So I just want those scratches to go like go going right through that area. And then everywhere else, just a few little dots here and there. Now, my favorite part of doing the the thrash metal is on edges. Like I did a little bit there is experimenting with it. But you come along and just be really careful just every now and then. Because that's the highlight. This is the high point, this edge, and so this is gonna get jacked. You know, just just dropping it. You know, or just bumping against something, constant abuse and wear. So it's going to have those little highlights right along the edge. And we got those deep scratches that are coming from here that are going to kind of come out. Fine brush for that again. These scratches go all the way through, um, right there. This one, I'll have it kind of stutter like it didn't go all the way in, but just kind of glance, glancing below, but still scratch right through there. And then all along this edge, you kind of emphasize that damage. Mostly won't, it'll be tough to show up around the white as much. You'll see it when it's clear coated. Just a little bit, not a lot. And we can even do some right here. Make it like this is all bare metal right around here. But you can create this, so it's bare metal, then the halo of the blue, then the halo of the white, because that's the progression, you know, it, it pits away, like the sandblasting is hitting, and eventually it's slowly, if you've ever seen a sandblasting machine, it takes away the top levels down. And that's what we're creating, that illusion. So don't go over the whole thing, and you don't want to have any silver that's all by itself. If you do, you got to come in and do a halo on it. Like this one, I'm just going to have a little circle, like it's a chip, just a chip right there. Bink! Same thing right up here. Boom. Just chips hitting it. If you do the silver on its own, it's, it's not going to read right. All of a sudden, oh man, it looks like crap now. It's like, yeah, because it, it can't, you've got to have the halo of that blue around it. 
So whenever you're doing stuff like this, battle damage, or when you're painting anything, when you're painting something, you have to think, like I will create a halo here because it's a very deep scratch. I'm going to actually brush that in. Whenever you're doing anything that mimics something in nature, you have to understand kind of the reason behind it, the physics behind it. Otherwise, you'll not be able to reproduce it. You know, if you want to create a rust effect, you don't need to make the helmet rust. But you need to understand why it's rusting or what the rust really is, what's causing it. Rust is caused by water buildup. It's caused by areas that are worn and the water builds up and the water stays there. The water seeps. It comes out from behind something and stains. If you understand all that, you know, if it's, if it's on a plane or something moving, it may be streaked down. If it's gravity, what's position is something sit naturally and so the water's just going down following gravity. These things are all you got to take into consideration whenever doing full finishing. So if you just start splattering everything all equally, it, it, it'll look like crap. Okay? All these edges, these all get a little bit of that treatment. Now there is a way, I had um, someone ask me if there's a way to make Quicksilver really, really thick. Well, I'll let you in on something. Quicksilver, very, very super fine metallic pigment. Um, and it is very expensive. So you could probably, I mean, to purchase it in really brushable form would be very expensive. But what you can do to make it thicker is you can take, put your Quicksilver in a little cup and then let it sit. And so it'll separate. And when it separates a little bit, it starts to start settling, take just a towel and just tip it. Put a little bit of it in the very top. Don't, don't get it down deep. And what it'll do is that towel, like a paper towel, will wick some of the solvent up. Now, it'll take a little bit of time, but if you can just remove 10 to 20% of that solvent, it'll be more brushable. Now, you got to be careful because if it totally dries out, then you know, your Quicksilver dried out. But that's a trick that it does work. I have done that. It does take some work, and is it, is it worthwhile? Well, for what I was doing, I had, was doing a touch-up on something where I needed to brush the Quicksilver, and it was the paint job, the area was all 100% Quicksilver. I had to use Quicksilver, otherwise it wouldn't match, and it did work. So we're getting some nice erosion in there, nice, it's starting to look, look nice and thrashed. And see, see how that reflectivity, that silver, you're not gonna get that with gray. I'm going to keep on doing this. I'm going to keep on adding. Um, let me see. Look at my. I'm going to add some back here. I'm just using a couple of reference images. I'm not, I'm not concerned about making it exactly like her helmet, but I want it to look kind of close. You know, every time you look at these different helmets, there's always subtle changes done to them. Just, heck, there's probably subtle changes between some of the hero shot helmets on the scene. I've worked on some movie sets where we've had variations in the props over time. Now when brushing this, it does take a little bit longer to dry, so be careful, don't be touching it. You'll accidentally touch it and smearing it, that kind of ruins the effect. But yeah, we're gonna come along, we've gotta do, not, not a solid line, but every now and then, especially on the corners, the corner is always gonna be, get blipped. And then we got that, I remember I came in and painted that streak And I'll come in with a dry and I'll do one more. And then all around the edge. That's pretty much it. Just 
Keep on doing this. It's, uh, it is tedious, but it's rewarding. It looks very good when it's all said and done. Even had even more erosion on the Boba Fett helmet. What if you make a mistake? You do an area like, oh man, I didn't want to do it there. Well, try wiping it off. You might get something that looks like, oh, like I like that effect. And all of a sudden now you got to wipe things off your entire helmet to get that effect all over it. You can come back in and redapple it. There are no rules. There are no, no hold fat, uh, hard and fast rules for process. It's what works. So your, your rules all are all based on what, how it looks in the end. You know, it's not like, oh, how did the process go? I mean, yeah, if you have a really cool technique but it takes forever, so it's not cost effective, that's a problem. But if you have a technique that no one else does and it works for you, and maybe it's geared on one of your abilities that other people don't have, knock yourself out, you didn't go for it. So there's no hard and fast rules to this stuff. End justifies the means when it comes to artwork. And a lot of times the best painters in this situation doing this are the fastest. Because uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff, if you're doing production, you know, if you're doing one of, one of a kind pieces, then you don't need to worry about, about you, know, you can take your time and justify it by saying you're the best. But on certain situations, like, you know, I could, could I have made this exactly the same as the original helmet and her helmet? Yes, I could have, but this mold was actually, or this 3D print is not exactly the same either, so there's some subtle changes. And if I did, I probably could have done it, and it would spend, because I've done, I've had people want me to duplicate props exactly for their own collection. They're not, they're not forgeries, they just want it to be exact. I, I guarantee I'm spending more time on that prop than the guy that did it originally because it always takes longer to duplicate something exactly than it does to just do it the first time. Okay, I've been having some fun on this and going along and uh, started using the sponge, dipping it into the silver and kind of adding some additional texturing to it. See, I went around the whole piece a little bit to add more to that. And then I also came in and mixed up and uh, actually took out of the airbrush some of that, that dark blue black and I kind of used it to go around and highlight those really deep burned uh, blaster, that blaster marks. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. I got a little brush right here and some of that paint. And then I'm just gonna go along and very, very carefully around the edge. Now I will come in with an airbrush and soften this a bit, but I want this to be distinct. Like this is a distinct scratch. And so the blue shows that it's kind of just like a heart, so it's almost like a black, because I'll come in and I'll, I'll make it look like a little bit of a burn there. But I'll also take this, this bluish black and I'll go around areas like stipple and then use my th finger to kind of kill it a little bit. Like I'll do that, that little line here, a little blaster mark, and then maybe come in and kill it a little bit and even smear it. A little bit of a smear on there and it kind of looks even better. So yeah, you get to do finger painting on your helmet now. Trying to make it as brush streaky, or kind of, I do a little dabbing. I kind of dab at it because I don't want it to look like it was actually drawn on. I want it to look like this is a natural scratch, kind of a busted up area. And I'll just keep going around the rest of the helmet, doing a little bit of this. And that's the problem: is you do a little bit, it means you got to do it on the rest of the helmet too. Not all over it, but you know, you still gotta have a somewhat, some continuity going on here. I do it around these scratches down here. I 
And a lot of this reflectivity is going to ch ch change. You may see some things that look kind of weird at certain angles. Those are going to go away as soon as we put the matte clear on it. We'll still have, a, we'll still have the, the metallic look of these scratches, but it's not going to really shine back at you bright, which we don't want to happen because these are dull. These are old. This is not fresh, brand new scratch. These are dull. These are old. Been here a while. See, and then just using that finger, pulling it there, kind of gives it a natural look. I'll do it down here too a little bit. You just got to make sure you catch it while it's still wet. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that. And then up here, of course, I'll do a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit around here, the pock marking. Which creates additional texture. Even some of the some of the silver was a little bit wet still, so when I touch it, it comes off, but look at what it does. It gives a really cool like little halo. This is all dry, but that one was still wet, so that way it, I'm able to, by pulling my finger off real quick, gives it a busted up look too. Let's see if we have any more like that. Eh, a little bit down there, not much. There's a few of them. There's one there. Oh, oh we, got a nice, we got a nice wet one up here. Let's see what, what we can make that look even more thrashed. We're knocking that little bump down so it won't show in the clear, and it also gives additional battle damage. So seeing all kinds of neat little tricks you can discover when you're just messing around. But you gotta give yourself permission to mess around. You gotta, you know, don't be too anal retentive or be too cautious, like, oh, I don't wanna mess this up. Oh, I'm scared I'm gonna mess it up. You know, you know how you know for sure you're gonna mess something up? You're scared to death you're gonna mess something up. And you just get to the realization you can fix it. It's no big deal. Nothing is hor so horrific. I mean, unless I run over this with a truck and then I just have to go buy another helmet, there's no way I'm going to ruin this helmet with paint. Uh, I got these scratches back here I got to emphasize. They're long battle scratches back here and do a little pull on that. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. That'll work. And let's, uh, let's see about coming in here and darkening these areas that got kind of eroded. I kind of like the way that they're thrash looking, but they got really eroded when I was working with um, that Dremel back here trying to clean up some damage on this from the 3D print. Do this one up here. Just dabble. Just you know, don't you don't want the brush to make brush marks. You want to leave stipples and stuff here and there. We can also play around with this. I haven't tried it yet. Let's see if we like it. We may not. We may say it looks like crap. So I want to show a different technique. I'm going to kind of kill it on the, I get some of the excess of paint off of this brush. Then see if we can use it. I'll use it right here just for. Huh. Not bad. I'm kind of liking that. Use my thumb to kind of dull it and damp it down. It's much more of a controlled stipple than with the airbrush, you know?
And it goes a long time before you, you start running out of paint. Still making little marks. I'm going to mostly emphasize it around these edges. Whoops, be careful on that. I got the brush moved and made it look kind of brushy. That's actually still cool though. Okay. Oh, see, another little trick. You may say, oh, I'm going to do, I should have done more of that earlier. No, no, no. You do different tricks here and there. You, you, you always want to have a lot of tricks in your arsenal. Okay, and that was too much. I didn't like that. Let's go ahead and see if we can wipe that out of there. Oh. It's not bad. You know, no matter what, even when I do something that's like, oh man, that's too much, that's still not bad. Still okay. Let's get some down here on this so that this guy matches the other side. Same thing here. I still got paint in it. Still leaching out of it. Do a lot of them back here because the back of the helmet just gets thrashed. And you may recognize this chip brush from me doing wood grain and stuff. I do a lot of wood grain real quick. A little stipply work I'll use chip brushes for. I love them because they're like just cheap. I get like a dollar each, maybe less than that, 50 cents. See, that's looking really nice and thrashed. I'm real happy with the texture we got going on this. And when it's matte cleared, it's really going to pop. Okay, I think what I'm going to come back with next, I'm going to, I'm going to put some candy black into my, uh, into the micron, so I can come in and do some really, really close little streaks and some actual smoke, and, and at that point, I think we're pretty much, we're pretty much done with this helmet. All we have left to do is clear coat it and assemble it. Got uh, all the little touch-ups done I want to, and the last thing I'm going to be doing is some candy black. I may got, grab some of that mixture I had used earlier, and uh, I'm going to come in and very carefully, the micron, I'm going to kind of come in and create some streaks that are a little bit, not, not quite as distinct as the, the line work I did, but they'll have more of a burned look to it. I want to create that, you know, that burned, a little bit of a thrashed. In fact, look, more than it's already there. We're just kind of adding to what we already have, just emphasizing it. Now, now this is candy black, so it's not going to be as dominant as normal black, but still, don't, don't, don't lose your mind on this stuff. It's very easy to fall in love with, oh, this is great, and then you all of a sudden everything's too damn dark. I'm also going to use it to come in and darken around, shadow some areas, because it can do that without dominating too much, because it is, it is a candy black. Maybe even come inside of here. That little arc, just darken that. And what else do we got here? Maybe come along the whole bottom edge and kind of hit it a little bit. Come back to these. Oh yeah, don't forget these. The scratches. Going to give them the whole smoky effect too. And that one. Maybe even come in, I'll sit the helmet like this, and spray inside these little channels. And here's a little trick we can do. Put this hairbrush right here. Let me get a piece of this tape. Do is I'll that there. Let me dull this tape a little bit. I don't want to pull up any of my artwork. Nice and dull. And that way I'm stepping each of these little platelets, and it gives this illusion of depth 
like they're, they're quite a bit stepped. In reality, they're right next to each other, but now I want it to look like they're angled out. Because that's the way the actual helmet is, more of sculptural. This one's a little bit flat. Well, that's what we're airbrushing for, faux finishing. Makes something have more depth than it really does. See, a little piece of tape is all you need. And it's still dark enough to see the tab. There, a lot better, a lot better looking. Maybe a little clean up this inside area. Now this is all covered up by the plate, and I'll show you that in a second. And we got these big old scratches. We've got to do the same thing with these guys. See, it creates a nice look of a burn streak. Like whatever hit this was going really fast, and it was really freaking hot, and it just scorched the the helmet right there. happy with that. That works out for me. Now, if you're wondering about those little magnets I glued in, those little neodymium magnets, I actually had an issue. I had one of them flipped around backwards. So they're really strong magnets. So this little end cap that's supposed to go on there stuck on one side and it would float off the other because of the magnet. So I, in the meantime, I fixed it. I, now, how difficult was it? I, I, I ground out a little bit right there and then I just pried it with a screwdriver. Now, luck will have it, the paint the glue stuck to the paint, not necessarily the, the 3D print. So it just popped out a little plug of paint and we were, we were good to go. This one's got the neodymium magnet in there as well. And I sanded this to get to fit better. Uh, we can still probably sand to make it fit even better than this. I think we can probably sand this down more. But this is the normal at rest down below when you're using it. But then when it stays up here, the magnet will hold it in place right there. And then our little end cap, two neodymium magnets back there. And that's it. That's on there. And uh, except for the final, final, final thing, which is Chris Arpin will be doing it with us. Um, we're going to turn around and have him, uh, you know, he'll, he'll take these parts off and hang them. And we're going to hit the whole thing with uh, the 4052 UVLS matte clear. And I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. Got our texture all the way around it. And the uh, only thing left is put a headliner in it and, and you're ready for the, you're ready to go hit celebration in Chicago with the rest of the cosplayers. All right guys, welcome back. Our 4052 is all completely dry and that pretty much wraps up this particular project. Again, uh, the last thing to do was to make this little shield, right? This piece that fits in and covers the inside of this helmet. So. If you guys saw the last video that Craig and I had done, um, we used a piece of acetate. So we actually got a little bit of this Duralar, it's a synthetic acetate. These come in sheets, these are uh, 10 by 12 sheets or 9 by 12 sheets. So we just went ahead and made a little template. This is what it looks like, it's very flexible. So we painted it from the backside, kind of like an RC car. And we basically used our Candy 2O for that. So I mixed up a little bit of Candy 2O with the 4050 and uh, mix it up six to one, six parts, 40-50 to one part candy 2-0, and that's kind of my go-to mix across the board for all of our candies. And uh, put a couple coats on a piece of acetate. Uh, this is like what I use to make a template, so we just laid this out first with tape, and then just put this on the acetate, cut my shape out, sprayed it, let it dry, and then we just bonded it inside, on the inside of the helmet. So that totally completes and puts the finishing touch on this helmet project. So for Craig Frazier and Craig Frazier Studios, I'm Chris Arpin with Createx Colors, and we will see you guys next time.